afternoon to be doing this podcast with one of the most sought after Catholic speakers within the church, author of a number of books, including The Warning on Amazon's number one bestsellers list, Mary's Mantle Consecration, Winning the Battle for Your Soul, amongst many others. It is suffice to say that this woman has a way with words. She's a retreat and parish mission leader, spiritual director, counselor, with 10 years as a hospice grief counselor, and 10 as a post-abortion healing director. So basically, she is one of the biggest mover and shakers in the Catholic Church today, but yet this woman clothes herself in complete humility. She never wants notoriety. She does not want attention. And I am just so blessed to be here with her today. Joining me is the phenomenal Christine Watkins. <laughs> Reagan, you know, I hope you're referring to someone else because that, <sighs> you know, that just, uh, okay, people. See, you're, you're just, you're just proving me to, to be true, yeah. to be accurate with my words well, because that's how humble you are. I just have to kind of move that aside i am uh, you know uh, we're nothing right we're nothing god is everything and so to him be all the glory um yes. thank you for having me on your show and if this ends up on queen of peace media um hey i want to introduce reagan long she is a fantastic catholic apologist and a social media guru i don't know how to deal with social media she knows everything about it i praise god that there are such people in the world and um so um if this ends up on queen of peace media please go below this video to check out reaganlong.com and um so thank you reagan for for having me on your show and being on mine <laughs> yes yes i love this and this is just how god works and i know it, it was so great you know i know you and i were both praying and contemplating on a number of topics to choose from for today and both of us came to each other and we felt called to really talk about preparation for the warning in prayer right last night about what we should yes. talk about yes and i i really feel like there is no time like the present my friend because it seems like we are at the doorstep of the tribulation if we are not already in the beginning parts of the tribulation and i feel like time is running short and your book which has been a bestseller and just so eye-opening for so many some people who have questioned the warning, um, I feel like your book has just been a game changer for them. And it, at any rate, whether this happens within our generation or not, we are gonna have to kneel before our Lord and answer to him. And I think this is just such a beautiful way to prepare our souls for, for what's coming. We need to know ourselves and we need to know our enemy in order to prepare and i heard this quote and it's from a sixth century bc chinese military strategist who won supposedly all his battles um, and of course we bring up chinese military strategic practices in our catholic faith but uh here we go um his Sorry, name is sun tzu and i and i want to read this quote because I thought, gosh, I, this could so be brought to life in terms of who we are and what we need to be aware of to prepare for the warning. Sun Tzu said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, in a hundred battles you will never be in peril. When you are ignorant of the enemy but know yourself, your chances of winning or losing are equal. If ignorant of both your enemy and of yourself, you are certain in every battle to be in peril. Now I'm gonna explain this. This is not easily digested. So just breaking apart the first sentence. If you know the enemy and know yourself in a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. So supposedly this warrior never lost a battle in 40 years. And know yourself, know your enemy, and you can win every battle. 
we're going to have battles. Life is a battle, and it's a, a spiritual war for our own souls. So how do we prepare for the warning? We have to, I mean, we can, we should go out there for social justice issues and for moral issues and evangelizing. All of that is extremely important to bring Christ to earth. That is the call of a Christian, the call of a Catholic Christian to evangelize, to make right, to straighten the paths for the Lord. Absolutely. We can't do that effectively if our path isn't straight inside of ourselves. Uh, we are the yeah. biggest battle we have, our own soul, you know, and every day is a battle and um, it's a battle that can be won every day, every time. But we have to know ourselves and we have to know our enemy. The second thing he says is when you are ignorant of the enemy, but know yourself, your chances of winning or losing are equal, meaning you're going to win 50% of the time and you're going to lose 50% of the time. So yeah, it's helpful to know yourself, but if you know yourself and don't know your enemy, you're going to get caught off guard and not understand what just happened to you. If you're ignorant of both, if you really don't know who you are and don't understand anything about your connection with God and you don't know your enemy or even that there is one, it says you are certain in every battle to be in peril. And so in this battle strategy here, knowing yourself first, I think there's certain key elements to knowing who we are as human beings that are indispensable if we're going to win the battle. One, first and foremost, we are created in God's image. And we have tremendous dignity. Tremendous. I, I, I mean, if you think about the honor of that, it's absolutely mind-boggling. The other thing that is mind-boggling is how much we're loved. If we look at Jesus on the cross and we ever think, nobody loves me, nobody cares, I'm, you know, I, I'm, woe is me, woe is me, and there are many woes, and the woes in the world are horrendous sometimes. But never amidst those woes are we not loved beyond all telling in a way that we can't even fathom. Mystics who have touched upon that love say we'd cry for joy if we knew of it, but for a second we would just weep in joy and wonder over how much we're loved. So knowledge of that is the first step. We have to know we don't, we don't even need a person's love to get through this life feeling 100% completely cherished. So that is a truth an indispensable, irrevocable truth. Every person. And that's one that Satan loves to steal from us because what he loves to do is have us live in our past, have that guilt, look at our past sins, um, and, and, and stay there and think, you're not worthy of heaven. You're not worthy of God's love. You've already messed up. It's too late. And so many people fall in that sand trap while God is just holding out his hands. Just come to me, surrender to me. I forgive you, repent. And so um, absolutely, if we even began to fathom God's love for us, we, we wouldn't be able to sustain it. I mean, we would just We'd fall apart. drop we drop, would drop dead in, in an thanks, Drop dead with gratitude. <laughs> we'd yeah. accept it. And we'd accept his mercy. And we'd say, sorry, it's great. I'm sorry. Um, so, so that is so key. And then the second thing, we have to know that first because that's the foundation. The second thing, if we know that, then it's very easy to accept that we come into this world with original sin. I mean, all we have to do, anyone who has kids, nieces, or runs a daycare, <laughs> you can tell there's not a bunch of little Jesuses and, and Marys. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Yes. Um, and we're part of that soup, and that's okay. It's really okay to, because what society is trying to do by wiping out God is to say, I have no faults. I wasn't, I didn't come into this world with any faults or weaknesses. I, no, no. So we must know that 
we have original sin. And knowing that helps us to understand that we're sinners, which, and what does sin mean? Because people do not like that word if they're not Christian. And I was the same way before my conversion. Sin, that's a dirty word. No, it's actually a really, really honest and helpful word. It means in the Bible, the translation for sin is missing the mark, hardening of the heart, turning away from God. And if you understand the definition, I think that even an atheist would understand some of those a bit. Yeah, have I ever hardened my heart? Have I ever turned away from the good? Have I ever missed the mark? So we have to know that we sin. And then if we do, and we're, meant, we're made in the image of God, and if we know that there's a heaven and that's where God wants us to be, then we need a savior. We need someone to pull us out of the muck of sin and death to bring us there. So those are foundational for knowing who we are as a human being. Made in the image of God, loved beyond all telling, come into this world in original sin. Heaven is our destiny should we choose it. And therefore, because we're in the muck and because we sin, we need a savior. And so with that foundation of knowing who we are, then we can turn to who is our enemy who doesn't want us in heaven, who wants us to be pulled down by our sins and remain in them, who doesn't want us to know about God and about who we are. Uh, he, and St. Ignatius of Loyola is within the Catholic Church, the master of discernment of spirits. So he has given us a blueprint of who the enemy is and how to fight him. And I have written out a whole strategy of his rules for discernment broken down in a very readable and understandable way. If you want to download that sheet, you can go to queenofpeacemedia.com, click on the menu, spiritual resources, queenofpeacemedia.com, click on the menu bar up top, spiritual resources, and then click on discernment of spirits by St. Ignatius of Loyola, and then this whole sheet will be there for you. It's important to keep in mind that St. Ignatius of Loyola said that if we are to do anything that goes outside the teachings of the church, as handed down through the apostles, through the true magisterium, through sacred scripture, then we are in the devil's territory. So we must keep that in mind before we even begin. So what does the enemy do? He likes to attack us in our weakest spot. So he's like an army commander. What does an army commander do? He scouts around and says, where is my subject, my enemy, meaning us, the weakest? Okay, and he battle rams that area of weakness until he can get in. And he doesn't try anything different. It's the same strategy our whole lives. So for instance, he's not going to try to get me, Christine, to smoke. I don't want a cigarette. I hate <laughs> nicotine. It no gives me desires. sinus infections. Like, <laughs> good luck. You know, you, you can whisper in my ear all day, hey, you know, get those Campbell cigarettes over there. And I mean, you, you can't it's even. A no, no, it's a no-go. So yeah. he's, he's clearly isn't trying that. Jim, you know, Smith to my right, who's a chain smoker, he's going to make sure he dies of cancer that way. I mean, yeah. Jim, Jim's going to be the one. Me, he's going to try my weaknesses. He, you know, you, your weaknesses. He's going to go after the same thing again and again. And one way to know what, and this is part of knowing thyself, right? You, we have to know our weaknesses. And some of us deny our weaknesses. And if we are in denial of our weaknesses, then all we have to do is think, okay, throughout my life, have there been people who got to know me who said the same thing over and over again? And I said, no, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Or I pushed them out of my life. No, sorry. Mm -mm. Well, that was likely if different people at different times all said the same thing, it's likely the truth. And it's probably something we don't want to hear that's very painful, that excoriates us, makes us want to vomit, 
just go, you're kidding. Is and, that and, really and me? And this is also, and this is also encompassing with, with pride, right? Because none yeah. of us want to accept that. And pride is one of the most deadly sins there is. Your soul, every single person watching this, your soul is so precious that both heaven and hell is going after it every single day. But where we do have our greatest weaknesses, that is exactly where God wants to bring us to sanctifying grace. Because when you even look at the great saints, when they overcame their sinful lifestyles in their past, that is where God just filled them with such grace. And, and so while Satan is fighting and just doing whatever he can to get into those cracks, God is also fighting and asking for us to surrender to him, to do his will, to let him have his way for us to grow in grace in those weaknesses. Because as, as helpless humans, we are not, those, those areas of weakness, we are not going to overcome those ourselves by ourselves. We need God's grace to fulfill us in those, those spots. You, you were absolutely right, Reagan. The saints, they didn't have a, a freedom from weaknesses they were weak just like the rest of us saint francis de sales for instance had a real anger problem and he ended up being known as the, a saint of gentleness and kindness and patience the opposite of anger but he talks about what this was like for him because that was so hard for him that's what he worked on the most he worked on his weakest link and so they looked under his desk and there were scrape marks from his nails on the bottom of his desk because he'd get so irritated by something the person across from him was saying or doing or was there for too long and he couldn't stand it anymore. So he would just gnaw at the desk in order to be controlled. And so, yeah, I just think that that's a great example of someone who is known for the very virtue that was their vice. And so um, it is, it's so important for us to reflect. And that's why those of us who are going to get to experience the warning, aside from God sending his son to die for us, this is going to be the greatest act of mercy in all of history. And I truly, Christine, I, I pray I pr I'm always like, Lord, please send the warning tomorrow. Let it come tomorrow. Even though I know I'm going to be a disaster and on my knees and crying and, and just, I, I don't even know how I'm going to deal with seeing how I've offended God. But I, I do know it's going to pull me even closer to him. And I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, push the warning into the future. Not interested. <laughs> really? <laughs> so we're all so... handling it psychologically in a different way. Although I'm, I'm going to be happy to be holier because I've asked God for so long to be a saint and it's got to happen. Um, so, but the, the Catholic Church teaches us this, avoid all near occasions of sin. That's part of knowing yourself. If you know that with your girlfriend or boyfriend, you'll slip into something sexual if you're in a, a room together or if you're here or there, it doesn't matter if someone else can handle it. If you can't or she can't or he can't, you're already going into that place or situation or whatever or substance that tempts you. You know what tempts you. Just think back, where did I fall? Where was I? What situation was it like? And in AA, they talk about halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I know that if I'm all those things, I'm about to fall. So we have to be really aware. If we are not doing our 12 steps and we're supposed to be in a program or entering one, if we're not seeking out counsel from, you know, spiritual direction or counselor when we know we need it, if we're not, um, you know, all these things, if, if it's been presented to us, for instance, to go to counseling with our spouse or something like that, and we've said no, you know, we are, we are not taking advantage of the hand that God's extending. God extends a hand through help, and he also extends a hand by saying, remember, you got to avoid that. So he pulls us into some things and he pushes us away from others. And it's up to us to listen to that. For instance, it's like 
uh, a recovering alcoholic, a very new recovering alcoholic thinking, I'm going to go into the bar because I've got this. Um, why even test yourself? Because it's going to be so, so incredibly difficult. Just stay out of the bar. Don't even go into the bar. Don't even have alcohol in your home for you to give yourself an opportunity to reach it. And so I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Christine, um, for us to get a grip, it's just like we know those doors to walk into. Do not give yourself that confidence thinking, I'm, I'm going to be okay this time. I'm not going to fall into sin this time. Just stay away. Keep the door shut. Do not give Satan a foothold in the door because he just needs a tiny foothold and he will bang that door down. Try to conquer a fall today. Like make a conscious decision to do the opposite of what you usually do. If you're impatient, try to act in a patient way. Even if it's for five minutes, engage our will in the opposite of whatever the vice is that we're tempted to do. If we tend to eat 15 brownies, have that carrot, you know, whatever it's right. going to be, engage in something that's the opposite. So, so we talked about that one aspect of the way that the enemy works is the, the army commander seeking the weakest point. A second way that St. Ignatius of Loyola says that the enemy act, and we have to forgive him, Reagan. You and I are going to get um, our hair on edge with this, but he actually said the enemy's like a weak-willed woman. <clears throat> How we can translate that into modern times, see, what, forgiveness is part of what we need to do today as well. Um, translated to modern times is like a spoiled child. So imagine a spoiled child goes, I want this. I really need it. I got to have it. What do you mean you're not giving it to me? And as a mother, you, you and I know what will happen if it's not something that the child should have, not good for them, not something that they deserve in the moment at all, and we give it to them, then what happens? They don't become more virtuous. They become a tyrant. And they expect it the next time, and Absolutely. then they're gonna. They find that if they complain yes. enough, and they cause enough of a fierce battle, they'll get what they want. So if we give in to the enemy's big, that's that's what the enemy is doing with the temptation. Do it, do it. I want you to do this. Come on. And we say, okay. We've just lost a battle. So. Knowing that, we have to be super firm, a super firm parent to say to ourselves and to the temptation, no, no. You want to do that. Everything and, and, in you wants to do yes. that. No. The answer is no. And the more we say no to ourselves and our weakness, the more we say no to the enemy, after a while, is he going to find it fruitful to keep coming and attacking us in that same place? Not so much. I mean, it may always right. be there. We may have a lifetime of that temptation. As St. Paul said, you know, he had a, a weakness that God was going to leave there his whole life that, to keep him humble. But it doesn't mean that St. Paul was destined to give in to it. So, firm. Are you bugging me now? You're bugging me now. The answer is no. It's going to remain no. It's just no. So that, that's another tactic. For instance, my, my oldest son became addicted to his PlayStation and I, I, he wouldn't get off when he, when he, I would have to drag him off. It was throwing a fit. He's, you know, killing people. I had a priest come and even talk to him about, you know, this Fortnite game, but everybody plays it. And I, I was telling him the dangers, what it's doing to his mind. And what I had to do one day, and he was so upset with me, and he cried, and he was so angry at me and told me he hated me, I physically took it out of his room, I put it in my car, and I drove it away. And when he calmed down later, I hugged him, and I told him I loved him, and I said, I love you so much, that's why I took your favorite thing out of the house, because it's causing so much problem, it's making you angry, it's making you sin. It's filling your head with absolute, I don't even what evil is filling your head. And our children are not going to get it at the time and not understand. But I told him one day you will thank me. 
And it's physically removing whatever it is that's the temptation, that's causing anger, that's causing them to sin. And it's not easy. My goodness, it's not easy. No, and we're not saying if one of your kids is acting up to physically remove them. <laughs> no, don't that. now. Yeah, you can't physically remove your child from the yeah. home. Yeah. Um, but what's causing them, certainly, Absolutely. what's causing them to act up, yes. And the third Although, you know, everything sometimes has, uh, not everything, but some things have an exception. Like a priest friend of mine says when he was taking advantage of his parents and and on drugs and living there, his parents saying, son, you can't be here anymore. Sorry, you're not respecting our rules and you're still on drugs. You got to, you got to move out. He said he hated them, of course, but that was the best thing his parents ever did. So there is such thing as tough love. Um, But so a third rule we talked about. Uh, the devil being an army commander, a spoiled child. A third one is like a false lover or we could say a child molester, something like that. He wants his liaisons kept in secret. He wants them in the dark. Nobody know about him. So if we look at ways we act sometimes, if we're doing something that we would not want our grandmother to know about, we would not want our spouse to know about, our kids to know about, or anyone to know about, if we're not being, hey, you know, I did such and such yesterday, then that's a good indicator it's the enemy moving in on us um, because he's like, keep this in the dark. I don't want you to tell anybody. And in the darkness, our problems grow. And so basically, and this is why confession is so beautiful, right? Because it sheds light on what it is and also telling a friend or telling a confidant or or just breaking it open what is the enemy going to do suddenly there's a big flashlight on him and he can't stay so that third way of knowing your enemy is super important as well so those are the three things plus knowing thyself that i hope in this warfare that we have every day is going to be helpful to the viewers and you know, it's a way to give ourselves our own illumination of conscience, as it were, um, to move in the right direction now. There's no time like the present. We're not called to wait for anything. Now, now is the time to work at being Christ-like, the person God intended us to be. Yes, and I love, and I love ending on the topic of confession and i always feel like i love during podcasts you know i feel like people can pull so much from it but then it's like sometimes people just need that one call to action and what i would say is get yourself to confession if you haven't been there for a while i used to be um, a catholic who you know i never missed sunday mass i went to confession at christmas and easter i was just doing bare minimum but yet i thought it was great And then God, you know, worked over me in so many ways up to daily mass and weekly confession. And I I drive my priest nuts. I would go to daily confession if I could, but they do need their breaks for me. But there's just something, the sanctifying grace from, from confession. It's so, it's so powerful. And then there's something to be said when you leave there, there's more, um, you're more likely to try to stay in the state of grace because you don't want to wreck what the the beautiful gift that you've just received. And so I think one of the greatest gifts besides having the Holy Eucharist as much as you possibly can, getting to confession as often as you can. Even Padre Pio himself had said, you know, everybody needs a dusting. I believe he's, I believe he recommended weekly Um, At minimum, I think he said monthly, but, um, and we're all, you know, we all need it. And it's just such a beautiful grace. And so um, I think there's so many ways to prepare, but getting the sacraments as much as possible, especially the Holy Eucharist, especially the reconciliation, take advantage because we cannot have those sacraments, those graces too much. It's impossible. Yeah, I mean, I would say the only the only thing that could possibly 
interfere with that is if you suffer from scruples and you've been forgiven something and it's it you've been forgiven you confessed it you're sorry and you keep confessing the same thing that you're not repeating it it's in the past but you confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it. that would be the only time that you're, yes. you're not using it healthfully um otherwise and i've go. done that i I've done that, Christine. And then the priest finally told me, he's like, Reagan, you haven't committed this sin again. You've confessed it. He's like, now I'm going to tell you it's sinful that you have not accepted God's mercy. So then I started crying. I'm like, oh no. (laughs) He's like, you have to, you've repented. You're not, you didn't, you haven't done it since. He's like, you have to accept God's mercy. So then I was a mess over that. I'm like, so should I confess that right now? Could <laughs> I have an God's mercy? Ah, oh, oh, yes, the joy beautiful. of scruples. But uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola suffered from scruples for a while as well. Uh, many saints have, and they, they had to work through that because that, that also is a trap of Satan, not believing you're forgiven yes. and having yes. you not look at life and your life in terms of the beauty of God's love and his forgiveness and your freedom in that and the joy of life, but oh gosh, I messed up and I'll mess up again and he's gonna get me no way to live. And that too is a trap of the enemy. So so yes, I would, I would like to leave with, yes, confession and Eucharist, the greatest gift that God has ever given us in our lifetimes, yes. And also just the belief, please try to believe this, that God loves you god loves you god loves you period i love that i love that and just one thing i I want to remind everybody but as we wrap here i do want to say you know i'm so very excited and we have this amazing catholic event coming up at, at the end of october october 28th christine and i are going to be in virginia beach at the Virginia Beach Convention Center for the second annual Truth Speakers Conference. It's a phenomenal, life-changing Catholic conference. The lineup we have is amazing. And Christine, can we link that below for people as well? The Truth Speakers, truthspeakers.org for you to register to get your ticket. Um, I know Christine and I would both love to meet you. And actually the main focus of the conference is also preparing for the morning, um, really getting our souls ready, leveling up as a Catholic. And then the other thing I wanted to mention too is thewarningmovie.com. I also want to thank all of you who have been donating to thegreatwarningmovie.com. The movie does a lot of what the warning will do. And so it's bringing truth, it's bringing hope, it's bringing mercy and it needs to be completed you can check out the link below to see the video that christine bacon and i did that shows the first clips that have ever been shown it's fantastic please go to www.thewarningmovie.com thewarningmovie.com and i have zero doubt that this is what the lord wants no donation is too small i love when projects like this, Christine, are funded by by us, by the people. We are the ones that, that enable these to happen. So if you're able, please make a donation because you're going to help win souls. Your donation will help win souls and bring this to fruition. So Absolutely. I'm really, really excited. It's so beautiful that some of you have donated $10 because that's what you can. I I look at that and that warms my heart. And, you know, I I was laughing as you said that. This is not my film, right? This is to help the the award-winning directors who are living and working on Providence seven days a week. And so no donation is too small. And for them and this movie that will save souls, no donation is too big. (laughs) No donation is too big. If you've got so the means, you... please, like, please, you know, um, yes. it's, it would be and, tremendous. And that is why God has blessed so many to be able to pour those blessings onto other things. And so if you've been called, you know, if you've been praying and thinking, where is God calling me to donate this 
this extra chunk of change that I have laying around. Um, I mean, there's there's no greater project right now that I think that you can make a donation to. And should do you want to say a closing prayer, Reagan? Sure, absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, so many of us feel unworthy, unloved, confused. We're exhausted. We're questioning. We wonder why you've chosen us to be the one here for these particular times, but you've chosen so wisely. If we've woken up for another day, you still are not finished with us. You still have a plan for our lives. Please give us discernment and obedience so we can ultimately spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. Please bless us with the gift to stay as close to the sacraments as we possibly can and to only do God's will. I ask this through Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.